The derivative of a function of a real variable measures the sensitivity to change of the function value, output value with respect to a change in its argument input value. Derivatives are a fundamental tool of calculus. For example, the derivative of the position of a moving object with respect to time is the object's velocity, this measures how quickly the position of the object changes when time advances. The derivative of a function of a single variable at a chosen input value, when it exists, is the slope of the tangent line to the graph of the function at that point. The tangent line is the best linear approximation of the function near that input value. For this reason, the derivative is often described as the instantaneous rate of change, the ratio of the instantaneous change in the dependent variable to that of the independent variable. Derivatives may be generalized to functions of several real variables. In this generalization, the derivative is reinterpreted as a linear transformation whose graph is after an appropriate translation, the best linear approximation to the graph of the original function. The Jacobian matrix is the matrix that represents this linear transformation with respect to the basis given by the choice of independent and dependent variables. It can be calculated in terms of the partial derivatives with respect to the independent variables. For a real valued function of several variables, the Jacobian matrix reduces to the gradient vector. The process of finding a derivative is called differentiation. The reverse process is called antidifferentiation. The fundamental theorem of calculus states that antidifferentiation is the same as integration. Differentiation and integration constitute the two fundamental operations in single variable calculus. Topic. Differentiation Differentiation is the action of computing a derivative. The derivative of a function y equals f x of a variable x is a measure of the rate at which the value y of the function changes with respect to the change of the variable x. It is called the derivative of f with respect to x. If x and y are real numbers, and if the graph of f is plotted against x, the derivative is the slope of this graph at each point. The simplest case, apart from the trivial case of a constant function, is when y is a linear function of x, meaning that the graph of y is a line. In this case, y f x m x plus b, for real numbers m and b, and the slope m is given by m equals change in y change in x equals delta y delta x display style m equals frac text change in y text change in x equals frac delta y delta x where the symbol delta delta is an abbreviation for change in this formula is true because y plus Delta y equals f x plus delta x equals m x plus delta x plus b equals m x plus m delta x plus b equals y plus m delta x display style y plus delta y equals f left x plus delta x right equals m left x plus delta x right plus b equals m x plus m delta x plus b equals y plus m delta x thus since y plus delta y equals y plus m delta x display style y plus delta y equals y plus m delta x it follows that delta y equals m delta x Display style delta y equals m delta x. This gives an exact value for the slope of a line. 
If the function f is not linear, i.e., its graph is not a straight line, however, then the change in y divided by the change in x varies. Differentiation is a method to find an exact value for this rate of change at any given value of x. The idea, illustrated by figures 1 to 3, is to compute the rate of change as the limit value of the ratio of the differences delta y, delta x as delta x becomes infinitely small. Notation Two distinct notations are commonly used for the derivative, one deriving from Leibniz and the other from Joseph Louis Lagrange. In Leibniz's notation, an infinitesimal change in x is denoted by dx, and the derivative of y with respect to x is written d y d x dx suggesting the ratio of two infinitesimal quantities. The above expression is read as the derivative of y with respect to x die by dx or die over dx. The oral form die dx is often used conversationally, although it may lead to confusion. In Lagrange's notation, the derivative with respect to x of a function f x is denoted f x read as f prime of x or fx x read as f prime x of x in case of ambiguity of the variable implied by the derivation. Lagrange's notation is sometimes incorrectly attributed to Newton. Topic. Rigorous definition The most common approach to turn this intuitive idea into a precise definition is to define the derivative as a limit of difference quotients of real numbers. This is the approach described below. Let f be a real valued function defined in an open neighborhood of a real number a. In classical geometry, the tangent line to the graph of the function f at a was the unique line through the point a, f a that did not meet the graph of f transversely, meaning that the line did not pass straight through the graph. The derivative of y with respect to x at a is, geometrically, the slope of the tangent line to the graph of f at a, f a. The slope of the tangent line is very close to the slope of the line through a, f a and a nearby point on the graph, for example, a plus h, f a plus h. These lines are called secant lines. A value of h close to zero gives a good approximation to the slope of the tangent line, and smaller values in absolute value of h will, in general, give better approximations. The slope m of the secant line is the difference between the y values of these points divided by the difference between the x values, that is m equals delta f a delta a equals f a plus h minus f a a plus h minus a equals f a plus h minus f a h Display style m equals frac delta f a delta equals frac f a plus h f a a plus h a equals frac f a plus h f a h. This expression is Newton's difference quotient. Passing from an approximation to an exact answer is done using a limit. Geometrically, the limit of the secant lines is the tangent line. Therefore, the limit of the difference quotient as h approaches zero, if it exists, should represent the slope of the tangent line to a, f a. This limit is defined to be the derivative of the function f at a f a equals lim h zero f a plus h minus f a h display style f a equals lim underscore h to 0 frac f a plus h f a h when the limit exists f is said to be differentiable at a here f a is one of several common notations for the derivative see below equivalently the derivative satisfies the property that lim h 0 f a 
plus h minus f a plus f a h h equals 0 display style lim underscore h to 0 frac f a plus h f a plus f a c d o t h h equals 0 which has the intuitive interpretation see figure 1 that the tangent line to f at a gives the best linear approximation f a plus h approximately equals f a plus f a h display style f a plus h approximately f a plus f a h to f near a ie for small h this interpretation is the easiest to generalize to other settings see below Substituting zero for h in the difference quotient causes division by zero, so the slope of the tangent line cannot be found directly using this method. Instead, define q h to be the difference quotient as a function of h q h equals f a plus h minus f a h Display style q h equals frac f a plus h f a h q h is the slope of the secant line between a f a and a plus h f a plus h. If f is a continuous function, meaning that its graph is an unbroken curve with no gaps, then q is a continuous function away from h equals zero. If the limit l i m h zero q h exists, meaning that there is a way of choosing a value for q zero that makes q a continuous function, then the function f is differentiable at a, and its derivative at a equals q zero. In practice, the existence of a continuous extension of the difference quotient q h to h. Topic. Zero is shown by modifying the numerator to cancel h in the denominator. Such manipulations can make the limit value of q for small h clear even though q is still not defined at h. Zero. This process can be long and tedious for complicated functions, and many shortcuts are commonly used to simplify the process. Topic. Definition over the hyperreals Relative to a hyperreal extension RR of the real numbers, the derivative of a real function y. Topic. F x at a real point x can be defined as the shadow of the quotient increment y, increment x for infinitesimal increment x, where increment y f x plus increment x minus f x. Here the natural extension of f to the hyperreals is still denoted f. Here the derivative is said to exist if the shadow is independent of the infinitesimal chosen. Topic <laughs> example. The squaring function given by f x. Topic x2 is differentiable at x 3, and its derivative there is 6. This result is established by calculating the limit as h approaches 0 of the difference quotient of f3 f 3 equals lim h 0 f 3 plus h minus f 3 h equals lim h 0 3 plus h 2 minus 3 2 h equals lim h 0 9 plus 6 h plus 
H two minus nine H equals lim H O six H plus H two H equals lim H zero six plus H display style begin aligned F three and equals lim underscore H to zero FRAC F three plus H F three H equals lim underscore H to zero FRAC three plus H carrot two minus three carrot two H ten PT and equals lim underscore H to zero FRAC nine plus six H plus H carrot two minus nine H equals lim underscore H to zero FRAC six H plus H carrot two H equals lim underscore H to zero six plus H end aligned the last expression shows that the difference quotient equals six plus H when H does not equal zero and is undefined when H topic zero because of the definition of the difference quotient However, the definition of the limit says the difference quotient does not need to be defined when h 0. The limit is the result of letting h go to 0, meaning it is the value that 6 plus h tends to as h becomes very small. Lim h 0 6 plus h equals 6 plus 0 equals 6 display style lim underscore H to 0 6 plus H equals 6 plus 0 equals 6 hence the slope of the graph of the squaring function at the point 3 9 is 6 and so its derivative at X topic 3 is F 3 6 More generally, a similar computation shows that the derivative of the squaring function at x Topic a is f a 2a f a equals lim h 0 f a plus H minus F a H equals lim H 0 a plus H 2 minus a 2 H equals lim H 0 a 2 plus 2 a h plus h 2 minus a 2 h equals lim h o 2 a h plus h 2 h equals lim h 0 2 a plus h equals 2 a display style begin aligned f a and equals lim underscore h to 0 frac f a plus h f a h equals lim underscore h to 0 frac a plus h caret 2 a caret 2 h 0 0.3 m and equals lim underscore h to 0 frac a caret 2 plus 2 a plus h caret 2 a caret 2 h equals lim underscore h to 0 frac 2 a plus h caret 2 h 0 3 m and equals lim underscore h to 0 2 a plus h equals 2 a end aligned topic continuity and differentiability If f is differentiable at a, then f must also be continuous at a. As an example, choose a point a and let f be the step function that returns the value 1 for all x less than a, and returns a different value 10 for all x greater than or equal to a. f cannot have a derivative at a. If h is negative, then a plus h is on the low part of the step, so the secant line from a to a plus h is very steep, and as h tends to zero the slope tends to infinity. If h is positive, then a plus h is on the high part of the step, so the secant line from a to a plus h has slope 0. Consequently, the secant lines do not approach any single slope, so the limit of the difference quotient does not exist. However, even if a function is continuous at a point, it may not be differentiable there. For example, the absolute value function given by f x x, is continuous at x 
0, but it is not differentiable there. If h is positive, then the slope of the secant line from 0 to h is 1, whereas if h is negative, then the slope of the secant line from 0 to h is negative 1. This can be seen graphically as a kink or a cusp in the graph at x. Topic 0. Even a function with a smooth graph is not differentiable at a point where its tangent is vertical, for instance, the function given by f x by one-third is not differentiable at x equals zero. In summary, for a function f to have a derivative it is necessary for the function f to be continuous, but continuity alone is not sufficient. Most functions that occur in practice have derivatives at all points or at almost every point. Early in the history of calculus, many mathematicians assumed that a continuous function was differentiable at most points. Under mild conditions, for example if the function is a monotone function or a Lipschitz function, this is true. However, in 1872 Weierstrass found the first example of a function that is continuous everywhere but differentiable nowhere. This example is now known as the Weierstrass function. In 1931, Stefan Banach proved that the set of functions that have a derivative at some point is a meager set in the space of all continuous functions. Informally, this means that hardly do any random continuous functions have a derivative at even one point. Topic the derivative as a function Let f be a function that has a derivative at every point in its domain. We can then define a function that maps every point x display style x to the value of the derivative of f display style f at x display style x. This function is written f and is called the derivative function or the derivative of f. Sometimes f has a derivative at most, but not all, points of its domain. The function whose value at a equals f a whenever f a is defined and elsewhere is undefined is also called the derivative of f. It is still a function, but its domain is strictly smaller than the domain of f. Using this idea, differentiation becomes a function of functions. The derivative is an operator whose domain is the set of all functions that have derivatives at every point of their domain and whose range is a set of functions. If we denote this operator by d, then d f is the function f. Since d f is a function, it can be evaluated at a point a. By the definition of the derivative function, d f a equals f a. For comparison, consider the doubling function given by f x equals 2 x. f is a real valued function of a real number, meaning that it takes numbers as inputs and has numbers as outputs, 1 2, 2 4, 3 6. Display style begin aligned 1 and mapsto 2, 2 and mapsto 4, 3 and mapsto 6, end aligned the operator d, however, is not defined on individual numbers. It is only defined on functions d x1 equals x0 d x x equals x1 d x x2 equals x2 x display style begin aligned d x maps to 1 and equals x maps to 0 d x maps to x and equals x maps to 1 d x maps to x caret 2 and equals x maps to 2 c d o t x end aligned because the output of d is a function the output of d can be evaluated at a point for instance, when d is applied to the squaring function, xx2, d outputs the doubling function x2x, which we named fx. This output function can then be evaluated to get f1. Topic 2, f2. 4, and so on. Topic higher derivatives Let f be a differentiable function, and let f be its derivative. The derivative of f if it has 1 is written f and is called the second derivative of f. Similarly, the derivative of the second derivative, if it exists, is written f and is called the third derivative of f. Continuing this process, one can define, if it exists, the nth derivative is the derivative of the n1 th derivative. These repeated derivatives are called higher order derivatives. The nth derivative is also called the derivative of order n. If x t represents the position of an object at time t, then the higher order derivatives of x have physical interpretations. The second derivative of x is the derivative of x, the velocity, and by definition this is the object's acceleration. The third derivative of x is defined to be the jerk, and the fourth derivative is defined to be the jounce. A function f need not have a derivative, for example, if it is not continuous. 
Similarly, even if f does have a derivative, it may not have a second derivative. For example, let f x equals plus x two if x zero minus x two if x zero. Display style f x equals begin cases plus x caret two and text if x g e q zero x caret two and text if x l e q zero. End cases calculation shows that f is a differentiable function whose derivative at x display style x is given by f x equals plus two x if x zero minus two x if x zero. Display style f x equals begin cases plus two x and text if x g e q zero two x and text if x l e q zero end cases f x is twice the absolute value function at x display style x and it does not have a derivative at zero. Similar examples show that a function can have a kth derivative for each non-negative integer k but not a k plus 1 th derivative. A function that has k successive derivatives is called k times differentiable. If in addition the kth derivative is continuous, then the function is said to be of differentiability class ck. This is a stronger condition than having k derivatives, as shown by the second example of smoothness section examples. A function that has infinitely many derivatives is called infinitely differentiable or smooth. On the real line, every polynomial function is infinitely differentiable. By standard differentiation rules, if a polynomial of degree n is differentiated n times, then it becomes a constant function. All of its subsequent derivatives are identically zero. In particular, they exist, so polynomials are smooth functions. The derivatives of a function f at a point x provide polynomial approximations to that function near x. For example, if f is twice differentiable, then f x plus h approximately equals f x plus f x h plus 1 2 f x h 2 display style f x plus h approximately f x plus f x h plus t f r a c 1 2 f x h caret 2 in the sense that lim h 0 f x plus h minus f x minus f x h minus 1 2 f x h 2 h 2 equals 0 Display style lim underscore h to zero frac f x plus h f x f x h frac one two f x h caret two h caret two equals zero. If f is infinitely differentiable, then this is the beginning of the Taylor series for f evaluated at x plus h around x. Topic inflection point. A point where the second derivative of a function changes sign is called an inflection point. At an inflection point, the second derivative may be zero, as in the case of the inflection point x equals zero of the function given by f x equals x three. Display style f x equals x caret three. Or it may fail to exist, as in the case of the inflection point x equals zero of the function given by f x equals x 1 3 display style f x equals x caret frac 1 3 at an inflection point a function switches from being a convex function to being a concave function or vice versa topic notation details Topic. Leibniz's notation The symbols d x dx d y and d y 
d x display style frac die dx were introduced by Gottfried Wilhelm Leibniz in 1675. It is still commonly used when the equation y equals f x is viewed as a functional relationship between dependent and independent variables. Then the first derivative is denoted by d y d x d f d x or d d x f display style frac die dx quad frac df dx text or frac d dx f and was once thought of as an infinitesimal quotient higher derivatives are expressed using the notation d n y d x n d n f d x n or d n d x n f Display style frac d caret n y dx caret n quad frac d caret n f dx caret n text or frac d caret n dx caret n f for the nth derivative of y equals f x display style y equals f x these are abbreviations for multiple applications of the derivative operator. For example, d two y d x two equals d d x d y d x. Display style frac d caret two y dx caret two equals frac d dx left frac die dx right. With Leibniz's notation, we can write the derivative of y display style y at the point x equals a display style x equals a in two different ways d y d x x equals a equals d y d x a display style left frac die dx right underscore x equals a equals frac die dx a Leibniz's notation allows one to specify the variable for differentiation in the denominator, which is relevant in partial differentiation. It also makes the chain rule easier to remember. D y d x equals d y d u d u d x Display style frac die dx equals frac die do c d o t frac do dx. Topic: Lagrange's notation. Sometimes referred to as prime notation, one of the most common modern notation for differentiation is due to Joseph Louis Lagrange and uses the prime mark so that the derivative of a function f display style f is denoted f display style f similarly the second and third derivatives are denoted f equals f display style f equals f and f equals f display style f equals f to denote the number of derivatives beyond this point, some authors use Roman numerals in superscript, whereas others place the number in parentheses. F I V display style F caret mathrm I V or F four display style F caret four. The latter notation generalizes to yield the notation F 
n display style f caret n for the nth derivative of f display style f this notation is most useful when we wish to talk about the derivative as being a function itself as in this case the leibniz notation can become cumbersome topic <laughs> newton's notation Newton's notation for differentiation, also called the dot notation, places a dot over the function name to represent a time derivative. If y equals f t, display style y equals f t, then y, display style dot y, and y, display style d d o t y denote respectively the first and second derivatives of y display style y this notation is used exclusively for derivatives with respect to time or arc length it is very common in physics differential equations and differential geometry while the notation becomes unmanageable for high order derivatives in practice only few derivatives are needed topic Euler's notation Euler's notation uses a differential operator d display style d which is applied to a function f display style f to give the first derivative d f display style df the nth derivative is denoted d n f display style d caret n f if y equals f x is a dependent variable then often the subscript x is attached to the d to clarify the independent variable x euler's notation is then written d x y display style d underscore x y or d x f x display style d underscore x f x although this subscript is often omitted when the variable x is understood for instance when this is the only variable present in the expression euler's notation is useful for stating and solving linear differential equations topic <laughs> rules of computation The derivative of a function can, in principle, be computed from the definition by considering the difference quotient, and computing its limit. In practice, once the derivatives of a few simple functions are known, the derivatives of other functions are more easily computed using rules for obtaining derivatives of more complicated functions from simpler ones. Topic. Rules for basic functions Most derivative computations eventually require taking the derivative of some common functions. The following incomplete list gives some of the most frequently used functions of a single real variable and their derivatives. Derivatives of powers, if f x equals x r display style f x equals x caret r where r is any real number, then f x equals r x r minus 1 display style f x equals r x caret r 1 wherever this is defined for example if f x equals x 1 4 display style f x equals x caret 1 quarter then f x equals 1 4 x minus 3 4 display style f x equals 1 quarter x caret minus 3 quarters and the derivative function is defined only for positive x not for x topic 0 when r 
0, this rule implies that f x is 0 for x does not equal 0, which is almost the constant rule stated below. Exponential and logarithmic functions d d x e x equals e x display style frac d dx e caret x equals e caret x d d x a x equals a x lane a display style frac d dx a caret x equals a caret x lane a d d x lane x equals 1 x x greater than 0 display style frac d dx lane x equals frac 1 x q quad x greater than 0 d d x log a x equals 1 x lane a display style frac d dx log underscore a x equals frac 1 x lane a trigonometric functions d d x sin x equals cos x Display style frac d dx sin x equals cos x d d x cos x equals minus sin x. Display style frac d dx cos x equals sin x. D D X tan X equals sec two X equals one cos two X equals one plus tan two X. Display style FRAC D D X tan X equals sec carrot two X equals FRAC one cos carrot two X equals one plus tan carrot two X inverse trigonometric functions D D X arc sine X equals one one minus X two minus one by one. Display style frac d dx arc sine x equals frac one sqrt one x caret two q quad minus one d dx arcos x equals minus one one minus x two minus one by one. Display style frac d dx arcos x equals frac one sqrt one x caret two q quad minus one d d x arctan x equals 1 1 plus x 2 display style frac d dx arctan x equals frac 1 1 plus x caret 2 topic rules for combined functions In many cases, complicated limit calculations by direct application of Newton's difference quotient can be avoided using differentiation rules. Some of the most basic rules are the following. Constant rule, if f x is constant, then f x equals 0. Display style f x equals 0. Some rule alpha f plus beta g equals alpha f plus beta g display style alpha f plus beta g equals alpha f plus beta g for all functions f and g and all real numbers alpha display style alpha and beta display style beta Product rule F G equals F G plus F G Displaystyle F G equals F plus F G 
for all functions f and g. As a special case, this rule includes the fact alpha f equals alpha f display style alpha f equals alpha f whenever alpha display style alpha is a constant because alpha f equals 0 f equals 0 display style alpha f equals 0 c d o t f equals 0 by the constant rule quotient rule f g equals f g minus f g g 2 display style left frac f g right equals frac f f g g caret 2 for all functions f and g at all inputs where g does not equal 0 chain rule if f x equals h g x display style f x equals h g x then f x equals h g x g x display style f x equals h g x c d o t g x topic computation example the derivative of the function given by f x equals x 4 plus sin x 2 minus lane x e x plus 7 display style f x equals x caret 4 plus sin x caret 2 lane x e caret x plus 7 is f x equals 4 x 4 minus 1 plus d x 2 d x cos x 2 minus d lane x dx east x minus lane x d e x d x plus zero equals four by three plus two x cos x two minus one x east x minus lane x e x display style begin aligned f x and equals four x caret four to one plus frac d left x caret two right d x cos x caret two frac d left lane x right d x east caret x lane x frac d left e caret Carrot x right dx plus o and equals four x carrot three plus two x cos x carrot two frac one x east carrot x lane x e carrot x end aligned. Here the second term was computed using the chain rule and third using the product rule. The known derivatives of the elementary functions x two x four sin x lane x and exp x equals x as well as the constant seven were also used equals topic in higher dimensions equals equals topic vector valued functions topic a vector valued function y of a real variable sends real numbers to vectors in some vector space Rn. A vector valued function can be split up into its coordinate functions y1, t, y2, t, yn, t, meaning that y t y1 t yn t. This includes, for example, parametric curves in R2 or R3. The coordinate functions are real-valued functions, so the above definition of derivative applies to them. 
The derivative of y t is defined to be the vector, called the tangent vector, whose coordinates are the derivatives of the coordinate functions. That is y t equals y 1 t y n t Display style math bf y t equals y underscore one t l dots y underscore n t. Equivalently, y t equals lim h zero y t plus h minus y t h Display style math bf y t equals lim underscore h to zero frac math bf y t plus h math bf y t h. If the limit exists, the subtraction in the numerator is the subtraction of vectors, not scalars. If the derivative of y exists for every value of t, then y is another vector-valued function. If e1 n is the standard basis for R n, then y t can also be written as y1 t e1 plus plus y n t n. If we assume that the derivative of a vector-valued function retains the linearity property, then the derivative of y t must be y1 t e1 plus plus y n T E N display style y underscore one T math BF E underscore one plus C D O T S plus Y underscore N T math BF E underscore N because each of the basis vectors is a constant. This generalization is useful, for example, if y t is the position vector of a particle at time t, then the derivative y t is the velocity vector of the particle at time t. <laughs> Partial derivatives Suppose that f is a function that depends on more than one variable, for instance, f x y equals x 2 plus x y plus y 2 display style f x y equals x caret 2 plus xi plus y caret 2 f can be reinterpreted as a family of functions of one variable indexed by the other variables f x y equals f x y equals x 2 plus x y plus y 2 display style f x y equals f underscore x y equals x caret 2 plus xi plus y caret 2 in other words, every value of x chooses a function, denoted f(x), which is a function of one real number. That is, x f x display style x mapsto f underscore x f x y equals x two plus x y plus y Two. Display style f underscore x y equals x caret two plus xi plus y caret two. Once a value of x is chosen, say a, then f x y determines a function f a that sends y to a two plus i plus y two. F a y equals a two plus a y plus y 2 display style f underscore a y equals a caret 2 plus i plus y caret 2 in this expression a is a constant not a variable so f a is a function of only one real variable consequently the definition of the derivative for a function of one variable applies f a y equals 
plus two y display style f underscore a y equals a plus two y. The above procedure can be performed for any choice of a. Assembling the derivatives together into a function gives a function that describes the variation of f in the y direction. f y x y equals x plus 2 y display style frac partial f partial y x y equals x plus 2 y this is the partial derivative of f with respect to y here is a rounded d called the partial derivative symbol to distinguish it from the letter d is sometimes pronounced der del or partial instead of d in general, the partial derivative of a function f x1, xn in the direction xi at the point a1, n is defined to be f x i a1 a n equals lim h 0 f a1 a i plus h a n minus f a 1 a i a n h Display style frac partial f partial x underscore i a underscore one l dots a underscore n equals lim underscore h to zero frac f a underscore one l dots a underscore i plus h l dots a underscore n f a underscore one l dots a underscore i l dots a underscore n h. In the above difference quotient, all the variables except she are held fixed. That choice of fixed values determines a function of one variable f a 1 a i minus 1 a i plus 1 a n x i equals f a 1 a i minus 1 x i a i plus 1 a n Display style f underscore a underscore one l dots a underscore i one a underscore i plus one l dots a underscore n x underscore i equals f a underscore one l dots a underscore i one x underscore i a underscore i plus one l dots a underscore n and by definition d f a one a i minus one A I plus one A N D X I A I equals F X I A one A N Display style frac df underscore a underscore one l dots a underscore i one a underscore i plus one l dots a underscore n dx underscore i a underscore i equals frac partial f partial x underscore i a underscore one l dots a underscore n. In other words, the different choices of a index a family of one variable functions, just as in the example above. This expression also shows that the computation of partial derivatives reduces to the computation of one variable derivatives. An important example of a function of several variables is the case of a scalar valued function f x1 xn on a domain in Euclidean space Rn, e.g., on R2 or R3. In this case, f has a partial derivative f, xj with respect to each variable xj. At the point a1 and these partial derivatives define the vector f a1 a n equals f 
x 1 a 1 a n f x n a 1 a n Display style nabla f a underscore one l dots a underscore n equals left frac partial f partial x underscore one a underscore one l dots a underscore n l dots frac partial f partial x underscore n a underscore one l dots a underscore n right. This vector is called the gradient of f at a. If f is differentiable at every point in some domain, then the gradient is a vector valued function f that takes the point a1 and to the vector f a1 and consequently the gradient determines a vector field. Topic: <laughs> Directional derivatives. If f is a real valued function on Rn, then the partial derivatives of f measure its variation in the direction of the coordinate axes. For example, if f is a function of x and y, then its partial derivatives measure the variation in f in the x direction and the y direction. They do not, however, directly measure the variation of f in any other direction, such as along the diagonal line y equals x. These are measured using directional derivatives. Choose a vector v equals v 1 v n display style math bf v equals v underscore 1 l dots v underscore n the directional derivative of f in the direction of v at the point x is the limit d v f x equals lim h 0 f x plus h v minus f x h display style d underscore math bf v f math bf x equals lim underscore h right arrow zero frac f math bf x plus h math bf v f math bf x h in some cases it may be easier to compute or estimate the directional derivative after changing the length of the vector. Often this is done to turn the problem into the computation of a directional derivative in the direction of a unit vector. To see how this works, suppose that v topic lambda u substitute h k lambda into the difference quotient the difference quotient becomes f x plus k lambda lambda u minus f x k lambda equals lambda f x plus k u minus f x k display style frac f math bf x plus k lambda lambda math bf u f math bf x k lambda equals lambda c d o t frac f math bf x plus k math bf u f math bf x k this is lambda times the difference quotient for the directional derivative of f with respect to u Furthermore, taking the limit as h tends to zero is the same as taking the limit as k tends to zero because h and k are multiples of each other. Therefore, dv f equals lambda du f. Because of this rescaling property, directional derivatives are frequently considered only for unit vectors. If all the partial derivatives of f exist and are continuous at x, then they determine the directional derivative of f in the direction v by the formula d v f x equals j equals 1 n v j f x j display style d underscore math bf v f bold symbol x equals sum underscore j equals 1 caret n v underscore j frac partial f partial x underscore j 
This is a consequence of the definition of the total derivative. It follows that the directional derivative is linear in V, meaning that dV plus W F equals dV F plus dW F. The same definition also works when F is a function with values in ERM. The above definition is applied to each component of the vectors. In this case, the directional derivative is a vector in ERM. Topic: <laughs> Total derivative, total differential, and Jacobian matrix. When f is a function from an open subset of Rn to Rm, then the directional derivative of f in a chosen direction is the best linear approximation to f at that point and in that direction. But when n greater than 1, no single directional derivative can give a complete picture of the behavior of f. The total derivative gives a complete picture by considering all directions at once. That is, for any vector v starting at a, the linear approximation formula holds f a plus v approximately equals f a plus f a v display style f math bf a plus math bf v approximately f math bf a plus f math bf a math bf v just like the single variable derivative f a is chosen so that the error in this approximation is as small as possible if n and m are both 1, then the derivative f a is a number and the expression f a v is the product of two numbers. But in higher dimensions, it is impossible for f a to be a number. If it were a number, then f a v would be a vector in Rn while the other terms would be vectors in Rm, and therefore the formula would not make sense. For the linear approximation formula to make sense, f a must be a function that sends vectors in relation to vectors in ERM, and f a v must denote this function evaluated at v. To determine what kind of function it is, notice that the linear approximation formula can be rewritten as f a plus v minus f a approximately equals f a v display style f math bf a plus math bf v f math bf a approximately f math bf a math bf v. Notice that if we choose another vector w, then this approximate equation determines another approximate equation by substituting w for v. It determines a third approximate equation by substituting both w for v and a plus v for a. By subtracting these two new equations, we get f a plus v plus w minus f a plus v minus f a plus w plus f a approximately equals f a plus v w minus f a w display style f math bf a plus math bf v plus math bf w f math bf a plus math bf v f math bf a plus math bf w plus f math bf a approximately f math bf a plus math bf v math bf w f math bf a math bf w if we assume that v is small and that the derivative varies continuously in a, then f a plus v is approximately equal to f a, and therefore the right-hand side is approximately zero. The left-hand side can be rewritten in a different way using the linear approximation formula with v plus w substituted for v. The linear approximation formula implies zero approximately equals f a plus v plus w minus f a plus v minus f a plus w plus f a equals f a plus v 
plus w minus f a minus f a plus v minus f a minus f a plus w minus f a approximately equals f a v plus w minus f a v minus f a w display style begin aligned zero and approximately f math b f a plus math b f v plus math b f w f math b f a plus math b f v f math b f a plus math b f w plus f math b f a and equals f math b f a plus math b f v plus math b f w f math b f a f math Math BF a plus Math BF V F Math BF a F Math BF a plus Math BF W F Math BF a and approximately F Math BF a Math BF V plus Math BF W F Math BF a Math BF V F Math BF a Math BF W end aligned. This suggests that F a is a linear transformation from the vector space R n to the vector space R. In fact, it is possible to make this a precise derivation by measuring the error in the approximations. Assume that the error in these linear approximation formula is bounded by a constant times, v, where the constant is independent of v but depends continuously on a. Then, after adding an appropriate error term, all of the above approximate equalities can be rephrased as inequalities. In particular, f a is a linear transformation up to a small error term. In the limit as v and w tend to zero, it must therefore be a linear transformation. Since we define the total derivative by taking a limit as v goes to zero, f a must be a linear transformation. In one variable, the fact that the derivative is the best linear approximation is expressed by the fact that it is the limit of difference quotients. However, the usual difference quotient does not make sense in higher dimensions because it is not usually possible to divide vectors. In particular, the numerator and denominator of the difference quotient are not even in the same vector space, the numerator lies in the codomain ERM while the denominator lies in the domain RN. Furthermore, the derivative is a linear transformation, a different type of object from both the numerator and denominator. To make precise the idea that F a is the best linear approximation, it is necessary to adapt a different formula for the one variable derivative in which these problems disappear. If f, r, r, then the usual definition of the derivative may be manipulated to show that the derivative of f at a is the unique number f a such that lim h 0 f a plus h minus f a plus f a h h equals Zero. Display style lim underscore h to zero frac f a plus h f a plus f a h h equals zero. This is equivalent to lim h zero f a plus h minus f a plus f a H H equals zero. Display style lim underscore H to zero frac f a plus H f a plus f a H H equals zero. Because the limit of a function tends to zero if and only if the limit of the absolute value of the function tends to zero. This last formula can be adapted to the many variable situation by replacing the absolute values with norms. The definition of the total derivative of f at a, therefore, is that it is the unique linear transformation f a, r n erm such that lim h 0 f a plus h minus f a plus f a h h equals 0 
Display style lim underscore math bf h to zero frac l vert f math bf a plus math bf h f math bf a plus f math bf a math bf h r vert l vert math bf h r vert equals zero. Here h is a vector in R n, so the norm in the denominator is the standard length on R n. However, f a h is a vector in erm, and the norm in the numerator is the standard length on erm. If v is a vector starting at a, then f a v is called the push forward of v by f and is sometimes written f v. If the total derivative exists at a, then all the partial derivatives and directional derivatives of f exist at a, and for all v, f a v is the directional derivative of f in the direction v. If we write f using coordinate functions, so that f equals f1, f2, fm, then the total derivative can be expressed using the partial derivatives as a matrix. This matrix is called the Jacobian matrix of f at a f a equals jack a equals f i x j i j Display style f math bf a equals operator name jack underscore math bf a equals left frac partial f underscore i partial x underscore j right underscore i j. The existence of the total derivative f a is strictly stronger than the existence of all the partial derivatives. But if the partial derivatives exist and are continuous, then the total derivative exists, is given by the Jacobian, and depends continuously on a. The definition of the total derivative subsumes the definition of the derivative in one variable. That is, if f is a real valued function of a real variable, then the total derivative exists if and only if the usual derivative exists. The Jacobian matrix reduces to a 1 times 1 matrix whose only entry is the derivative f x. This 1 times 1 matrix satisfies the property that f a plus h minus f a plus f a h is approximately zero, in other words that f a plus h approximately equals f a plus f a h display style f a plus h approximately f a plus f a h up to changing variables this is the statement that the function x f a plus f a x minus a display style x maps to f a plus f a x a is the best linear approximation to f at a. The total derivative of a function does not give another function in the same way as the one variable case. This is because the total derivative of a multivariable function has to record much more information than the derivative of a single variable function. Instead, the total derivative gives a function from the tangent bundle of the source to the tangent bundle of the target. The natural analog of second, third, and higher order total derivatives is not a linear transformation, is not a function on the tangent bundle, and is not built by repeatedly taking the total derivative. The analog of a higher order derivative, called a jet, cannot be a linear transformation because higher order derivatives reflect subtle geometric information, such as concavity, which cannot be described in terms of linear data such as vectors. It cannot be a function on the tangent bundle because the tangent bundle only has room for the base space and the directional derivatives. Because jets capture higher order information, they take as arguments additional coordinates representing higher order changes in direction. The space determined by these additional coordinates is called the jet bundle. The relation between the total derivative and the partial derivatives of a function is paralleled in the relation between the kth order jet of a function and its partial derivatives of order less than or equal to k. By repeatedly taking the total derivative, one obtains higher versions of the Frechet derivative, specialized to RP. The kth order total derivative may be interpreted as a map d k f r n l k r n times times r n r m 
Display style d caret k f math b r caret n to l caret k math b r caret n times c d o t s times math b r caret n math b r caret m, which takes a point x in R n and assigns to it an element of the space of k linear maps from R n to Erm the best in a certain precise sense k linear approximation to f at that point. By precomposing it with the diagonal map delta x x x, a generalized Taylor series may be begun as f x approximately equals f a plus d f x minus a plus d two f delta x minus a plus equals f a plus d f x minus a plus d 2 f x minus a x minus a plus equals f a plus i d f i x i minus a i plus j k d 2 f j k x j minus a j x k minus a k plus display style begin aligned f math b f x and approximately f math b f a plus d f math b f x a plus d caret 2 f delta math b f x a plus c d o t s and equals f math b f a plus d f math b f x a plus d caret 2 f math b f x a a math bf x a plus c d o t s and equals f math bf a plus sum underscore i d f underscore i x underscore i a underscore i plus sum underscore j k d caret two f underscore j k x underscore j a underscore j x underscore k a underscore k plus c d o t s end aligned where f a is identified with a constant function she minus i are the components of the vector x minus a and d f I and D two F J K are the components of D F and D two F as linear transformations. Topic <laughs> Generalizations The concept of a derivative can be extended to many other settings. The common thread is that the derivative of a function at a point serves as a linear approximation of the function at that point. An important generalization of the derivative concerns complex functions of complex variables, such as functions from a domain in the complex numbers c to c. The notion of the derivative of such a function is obtained by replacing real variables with complex variables in the definition. If c is identified with R2 by writing a complex number z as x plus i y, then a differentiable function from c to c is certainly differentiable as a function from R2 to R2, in the sense that its partial derivatives all exist, but the converse is not true in general. The complex derivative only exists if the real derivative is complex linear, and this imposes relations between the partial derivatives called the Cauchy Riemann equations, see holomorphic functions. Another generalization concerns functions between differentiable or smooth manifolds. Intuitively speaking such a manifold M is a space that can be approximated near each point X by a vector space called its tangent space. The prototypical example is a smooth surface in R3. The derivative or differential of a differentiable map F, Mn between manifolds, at a point X and M, is then a linear map from the tangent space of M at X to the tangent space of N at F X. The derivative function becomes a map between the tangent bundles of M and N. This definition is fundamental in differential geometry and has many uses. See push forward differential and pullback differential geometry. Differentiation can also be defined for maps between infinite dimensional vector spaces such as Banach spaces and Fréchet spaces. There is a generalization both of the directional derivative called the Gâteaux derivative and of the differential called the Fréchet derivative. One deficiency of the classical derivative is that not very many functions are differentiable. Nevertheless, there is a way of extending the notion of the derivative so that all continuous functions and many other functions can be differentiated using a concept known as the weak derivative. 
The idea is to embed the continuous functions in a larger space called the space of distributions and only require that a function is differentiable on average. The properties of the derivative have inspired the introduction and study of many similar objects in algebra and topology. See, for example, differential algebra. The discrete equivalent of differentiation is finite differences. The study of differential calculus is unified with the calculus of finite differences in timescale calculus. Also see arithmetic derivative. History Calculus, known in its early history as infinitesimal calculus, is a mathematical discipline focused on limits, functions, derivatives, integrals, and infinite series. Isaac Newton and Gottfried Leibniz independently discovered calculus in the mid-17th century. However, each inventor claimed the other stole his work in a bitter dispute that continued until the end of their lives. See also Applications of derivatives Automatic differentiation Differentiability class Differentiation rules Differintegral Fractal derivative Generalizations of the derivative Haas derivative History of calculus Integral Infinitesimal Linearization Mathematical analysis Multiplicative inverse Non-Newtonian calculus Numerical differentiation Rate mathematics radon nikodym theorem symmetric derivative schwarzian derivative equals equals notes